Well, welcome back. Today we are in Luke 17, and I asked you to read the whole chapter, but of course we're going to be focusing in on verses 11 through 20 today, and I'm going to read the passage to get us started. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of, the Samaria, of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there, he, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that they went and they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were they not found? Were not were there and not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Now I love this passage. I love it for so many reasons. First, if we look at the picture of the leper in here, leprosy is often a picture of sin and our condition before salvation. We are like these lepers. We are in need of a cleansing. We are outside the camp. Lepers were not allowed to be in with the people every day because leprosy was very contagious. And isn't our sinful condition very contagious? Isn't being around others that are sinning and making bad choices, isn't it contagious? It makes you kind of want to maybe do what they're doing. And so just like these lepers, um, you know, the people had them pushed away because they didn't want to catch this disease that they had. But the, they saw Jesus, and they were passing between Samaria and Galilee. And remember, the Samaritans are half, what we would consider a, maybe a half-breed, um, for lack of a better word. Um, they were half-Jew, half-Gentile. And so the Jews looked down on them. They did not find, um, they did not consider them to be Jewish. Um, it's like the, um, like they were not even part of anything in their lineage or in their history, even though one of their family members would have been Jewish. And so they see these lepers, they see Jesus, and they cry out for mercy. They cry out to have a cleansing done for them. And you know, Jesus doesn't touch them. Jesus doesn't, um, you know, spit in the dirt and make a salve. No, he just says, go and show yourselves to the priest. It's that easy. And so the lepers, off they go. But one man turned around because he realized the true redemption that he had just had. The true healing that had just been given to him before the healing had even taken place maybe he realized what God had done for him and what God was doing for him and he thanked God in a loud voice he glorified God and he fell on his face and he gave thanks and he was a Samaritan and I think that's important to the story because the Jews didn't look well on Samaritans and yet the Samaritan Jesus used him as an example of what a thankful heart should look like a thankful heart should stop in the moment and give praise and give worship. And I, um, I'm just so convicted because I don't know that my heart is always to stop right there where the miracle happens and give thanks. I don't know um, that my heart is always in the midst of whatever I'm going through to always see God's hand at work. Sometimes I'm just so overwhelmed by the circumstances or I'm so overwhelmed with what has just happened and the blessing that it was that I forget to look at the one who gave it to me. And so it's not, um, it's not clear in this passage, but I wonder, um, you know, I wonder what, how that was different for that Samaritan man. It says, go your way, your faith has made you whole, You're, you well. I wonder, did he ever make it to the priest? I'm sure he did, because I'm sure he obeyed. 
the first um, command, but he was already well. I wonder if it took the others till they got to the priest, until the obedience was completely fulfilled before they were healed. Those are just some wonderings that I have. But for me, I think that it's the heart of the matter here is when do we give thanks? I often tell my children that obedience has to be immediate and exact with a right heart attitude. And I think thankfulness needs to be closer to immediate. I think that we struggle with giving thanks because we're so wrapped up in everything else. And I wonder if we would just teach ourselves to stop and say, thank you, God. If we would see more blessing in our life. If we would see the hand of God. I think we miss it sometimes because we're not thankful. We miss the moments that God gives us the little blessings along the way. So my challenge for you today is to find those thankful moments. The moments that you need to say, thank you, God. Maybe it is a beautiful blue sky. Thank you, Lord. Maybe your children got their math lesson right. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you get to um, snuggle a sweet little one close. Thank you, Lord. Whatever it is that God gives you today, make sure you say thank you. I think about my kids, and I love and adore my children. And sometimes we will do really fun things with our kids, and we'll get home, and it's just up the stairs they go, and we don't ever hear thanks. We don't hear thanks. And I think how I feel in those moments when I've done so much to, um, to pour into them, and they, they didn't even say thank you. But then I think of those moments where we've been busy and we've gone and done something really great or we've gone out and we've gotten them something simple that they need and they just look at me and um, their blue eyes are sparkling and they say thank you. And my heart melts. God desires to have those moments with you where you just look up at him and you just say thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for being my God. Just make sure you tell him thank you today and worship God with your life.